Mike Threadgold, I'm National Specification Manager for Fosrock Limited. And what I've been doing today is explaining to people about the need to repair damaged concrete. Now, concrete is a well-used product in the construction industry, but if it's not applied correctly in the first instance, it can cause defects that need repairing in new structures, but also if it's open to attack from the environment, carbonation attack, chloride attack from road sorts, etc., that can penetrate the concrete and start to corrode the steel reinforcing. What we was explaining today was, is what that process is and also how to repair it properly. And one of the key functions is really first, first of all is to understand why the concrete problem has occurred in the first place and then you can build a specification around what products and what application methods to use to repair your structure. Once we get on to repairing the structure, we first talked about the steel itself and how it corrodes. And, and if it corrodes by with carbonation attack, it tends to be a brown rust. And if it corrodes through chlorides, it tends to be a black, black rust with pitting, pitting in the steel. So you can quite easily identify visually what type of problems you've got on the structure. And look at the steel and clean it properly back to SA two and a half, and then prime it to protect it. And some people would say, why are you priming the steel? Because you don't prime it when you put new concrete in, but when you're dealing with little pockets of, of repairs, then you can set a chemical reaction up, a chemical reaction up alongside the bar that could start the corrosion appearing elsewhere. So it's key that you prime the steel correctly using the correct primer. Once you prime the steel, you can then start to repair the structure using either hand place repair materials, flowable repair materials, or, or spray applied repair materials. And there have been demos going on today for all those three. The hand applied products are quite good because you can get high build ups up to 80 mil, 90 mil thick in one hit, which allows you to finish repairs quite easily. And once you finish your repairs by hand a place or pouring them or, or, or spraying them, then you can look at the overall surface and put a protective layer on to protect the surface imperfections using a, a fairing coat or a leveling mortar. And then finally, you start to look about protecting the, the overall building using protective coatings. And these can be penetrative coatings, clear surface coatings or pigmented coatings which can either be rigid or elastomeric. The key to using these is that they allow the building still to breathe, but then, but then stop moisture and oxygen getting into the structure, which starts corrosion. The piece of resistance of the coatings is really an elastomeric coating, which is like putting an elastomeric band on your building. It, 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 it will take future cracking in the, in the structure and stop the um, urban nasties and moisture and oxygen getting into the structure and starting the corrosion process in the concrete. And that's what we've been talking about today.